We are going to start a lesson on thermodynamics. You've had a little taste of thermodynamics when you covered thermochemistry. Thermochemistry was the world of enthalpy and delta H. And thermochemistry is a subcategory of thermodynamics. Um, so there are some things that you learn in thermal chemistry that you need to make sure you pull forward because from time to time we will need to use that information. First of all, there is the first law of thermodynamics. We covered that and we've got it stated right there. Energy can be converted from one form to another, but it cannot be created or destroyed. Now the equation that we utilized was that equation and I used delta E for the change in internal energy. Sometimes a U is used instead, the letter U for internal energy, but delta E equals Q, heat, plus W, work, which says that when a system undergoes a change in its in energy, it can only do so by giving off or taking in heat or doing work or having work done on it. So that's how you get energy in and out of a system. The other things that you need to make sure you bring forward are what the definition of a state function is and, and understanding how we work with state functions and we use capital letters for those state functions as a reminder. And the big one that we learned in thermochemistry was enthalpy change, delta H. Now delta H um, can either be a positive or a negative sign, and that tells you whether it's endothermic or exothermic. So you need to make sure you know that. Um, those, that's the kind of information that you will utilize here in this section. So. We're going to, first of all, explain why we study thermodynamics. There's a big underarching why for this study. And the whole reason that you determine or you study thermodynamics is to try to predict whether a process will occur spontaneously. And by spontaneously, we mean something that will occur without undergoing any outside work on it. So you can force some things to happen, but if it occurs without you doing any work, then it is a spontaneous process. So let's think of some spontaneous processes, okay? Um, this says spontaneous reactions. They're not all reactions, but they are processes that can take place. The first one is, um, if you take water and you put it in the freezer, under that set of conditions, it will spontaneously turn into ice. It will spontaneously freeze. Now you take that same water and stick it on a burner on a stove and heat it up, it's not gonna spontaneously freeze. That's a different set of conditions. So when you talk about spontaneity, you're defining a set of conditions and you're asking, will it occur spontaneously under these sets of conditions? If you take sodium, the metal, now this one is a reaction, and you place it in water, it will convert the sodium to sodium hydroxide and it will release hydrogen gas. It's a pretty violent reaction. The next one um, is kind of like a chemical reaction. We are taking and using substances and creating something new, but it's within the same substance. I don't know if you knew this, but diamonds would spontaneously convert to graphite under our atmospheric condition pressures, okay? Now, you can change the conditions and you can take graphite and under high heat and pressure convert it to diamonds, but once you take it out of those conditions and you bring them up to the surface, they will spontaneously turn into graphite. Now, we don't have to worry about our diamond rings converting because just because it will occur spontaneously doesn't say anything about how fast it will occur. It could be a slow process, and thankfully this one is a very, very slow process. It's not gonna occur in your lifetime, and if you had one passed down to you from your great-grandmother, it's not gonna convert in that lifetime there. So there's a whole different study that we look at pertaining to how fast something happens, and that's kinetics, so we'll have a chapter about kinetics. But right here in thermodynamics, we're trying to study whether it is a spontaneous process under a certain set of conditions. Um, so let's go back to the purpose. We're trying to determine if something is going to occur spontaneously or not. And so they had an idea. We know about enthalpy, that's that delta H, and it seemed like things like to go downhill, and we knew that with enthalpy, um, if a reaction is, and let me go ahead and put the statement up there, the, the idea was that if a reaction is exothermic, it would be spontaneous. So we know that here, if this was the reactants and their energy, so I'm putting energy along this axis, the products would have lower energy, okay? 
things like tend to go downhill, right? So if they went lower in energy, we know that it would give off all of this extra heat. And that would be a measure from here to here of our delta H value, our enthalpy change value. And they thought, well, because things like to go lower in energy, and uh, if you gave off heat and it was exothermic, let's predict that that is our way of saying what is going to be spontaneous and what would not be spontaneous. And so all you have to do is look around and see if you, can you find any examples of something that don't meet this criteria. And if that's the true, if that's true, if we can find something that doesn't meet this criteria that's spontaneous, then we have to throw this out as an idea. But this was, was the starting point. So let's um, pull an ice cube out of the freezer. Okay, we pull it out of the freezer, we set it here, and we watch what's going to happen. What will happen to that? Well, we all know that once you take the ice cube out of the freezer, under this sort of circumstances, I can tell you I'm not in a freezer right now, I'm out in a room, that that ice cube is going to spontaneously melt. That's what it's going to do. So we have a spontaneous process, and we have to think about this process. Now, I want you to answer this question. The melting of ice, is that endothermic, is it taking in heat, or is it exothermic, it's giving off heat? Well, a lot of students struggle with this. This one is endothermic. It is taking in heat from the surroundings. If you think about what that heat is doing, in an ice cube, the molecules are really close together. They're all attached to each other and attracted to each other. And when you melt it, okay, they're pulled apart slightly so that they can slide past each other. So they're moving about in here. In the melting process, you've pulled them apart. You had to put in energy to pull them apart. You can also think about how how do you have, how could you do it even faster? Well, you add more heat. You put it on the stove. It's going to melt it faster. You're dumping in heat. So that is an endothermic process. So is it spontaneous? Yes, in room temperature, it will spontaneously do that. But it is taking in heat. It is not giving off heat. It is going up in energy. So the first idea is incorrect. It is not a perfect predictor. Now, the truth of the matter is, more reactions that are exothermic are spontaneous than are endothermic. There are fewer reactions that are endothermic that are spontaneous. And so it is a semi-good predictor of spontaneity, but it's not a perfect predictor of spontaneity, so we have to go on to our next idea. Now, we cannot go on into our next idea until we define another thermodynamic function. So we have enthalpy. We have our enthalpy and our enthalpy change. There will be another one that we're going to learn about in our next lesson.